Hi, Danielle the Clay Lady here on the Clay Lady's campus in Nashville, Tennessee. And today I want to visit with you about trimming your pot. That's when we turn a leather hard pot upside down and we trim the excess clay away. There's actually two purposes for trimming a pot. One is to make your inside pot match your outside pot. The goal would be that if you cut this in half, that the walls and the floor and the foot of the pot would all be the same thickness. The other goal is to put a foot on it. A foot is the ring that's on the bottom of a, of a pot. That's because when you're glazing, you can't have glaze on the bottom of a pot. So if you're able to have a foot, and if the foot well, the space between the foot, is deep enough, you can glaze the entire pot except for that little ring. And that way you can have glaze all around your pot. So the way you know that a pot is ready to trim is it's leather hard. You ought to be able to pick it up and not worry about it moving. The rim should be sturdy enough because it is going to have to rest on top. And also it doesn't smear on the bottom. In fact, if you take your finger and scratch it with your fingernail, look, it rolls. It doesn't smear. That's a very good way of checking to make sure that your pot is ready for trimming. The next thing we need to know is how much am I going to trim away? You know, I want to feel the bottom. I'm going to feel the side. If you look at my pot, you can actually see the extra clay right here that needs to be coming off during the trimming. But sometimes it's hard to get a real good feel. So the way that you can check this is you can take a piece of clay, roll it into a coil and set it on the inside of your pot, measuring how far apart the floor is. If you've watched my other videos, you'll know that when we're making a pot, I always try to make a corner between the floor and the walls. And that's what I'm measuring, the inside floor. And then I can bring this out and hold it on the outside. And that shows me how thick the walls are. So you can tell I don't have a lot to trim. Uh, if my hot dog came out and it was like this, I have a lot to trim. And if my hot dog comes out like this, almost to the edges, then I don't hardly have anything to trim at all. So this is really just a way of getting an idea of how much you have to trim. And then when I looked at mine, I saw that I had a little bit to trim, but not a lot. You don't want to make marks or make the marks be part of your foot. That's not what this is for. This is for you just to get a visual of how much you have to trim. The next thing I need to know is how thick is the bottom? How deep can my foot well be? And so what we do is we we can take two tools. I usually use my trim tool and then my wooden knife tool and I'm going to make a T. And then after I make a T I can bring this out, set this over here and you can see that my foot is just about right. I've got a little bit to trim but not a lot. Let's measure that one more time where you can see. There we go. See the space right there? That's how much the, 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 how thick the floor of my pot is. So I know the, how deep I can make the foot well, which is just about average, not too much. So here we go. The next thing I need to do when I turn my pot upside down, I need to make sure this is level. You know, sometimes when you throw pots, one side is a little higher than the other. And if the pot was sitting like this, it would be very hard to trim this evenly. So what I need to do is make sure it's level. I have this little bubble level and I can go east, west, north and south, making sure that bubble's right in the middle. If your pot is not level, what you can do is lift the pot up, put a little piece of paper underneath the rim, and that will help level this up. We're not trimming from here down. All of this should already be finished. So all that we're going to do is trim this. We really want this to be level so it'll trim evenly. Now, you should only take one piece of paper. Sometimes you can scoot it around to make sure that it's good and level. Once it's level, and we know how thick it is, we need to center it because when we hold the tool next to it, we want to make sure we're trimming evenly. Now I have a bat on my wheel head, so it's hard to tell where the center is. If you trim directly on the uh, wheel head, you can see it has these rings in here to help you know what, uh, where to set your pot and where the center would be. Since I don't have that, what I can do is take a wet sponge and I can draw a circle with my sponge and that helps me see where the center would be. If I look here, I can tell my pot's too far this way, it needs to come this way. So I can get a good start of where center is by looking at the wet ring and trying to get it in the middle. Even this, though, doesn't get it quite centered. So what we need to do next is to make sure this is right in the middle, centered in the middle of the wheel head. And the way I do that is I hold my trim tool and I hold it really close to the pot. And when it, the pot hits the tool, see where it's hitting? That means it's too close to my tool. So where that mark is, I'm going to push it towards the center. Now, if I was doing this with my pot and not for your video, I would hold the tool right here. And when it hit my pot, I would scoot it to the middle 
And sometimes this takes more than one. So I did pretty good, but I could still do just a little bit of a scoot like that. There we go. So that's centered. And no matter how close I hold my tool, it's the distance between the pot and the tool is the same. It's even all the way around. So once I have it leveled and I have it centered, I want to attach it to my batter, to the wheel head. This is another nice reason to have this wet mark here because if I just put it on the dry batter, dry wheel head, the clay's not going to stick. But with the water, it's going to help stick. I need three hot dogs of clay, preferably fresh clay, preferably the same color as your pot. I'm going to lay this hot dog down right on the rim, but I'm not going to push into the rim. I'm going to push down onto my batter, onto the wheel head. We use three hot dogs of clay because if at any time I need to check this and see how am I doing, do I have, do I have a little bit more to trim, I can take one hot dog away, pull my pot out. Nine times out of ten, it's recentered when I slide it back into these two hot dogs. So I'm going to do three hot dogs. And now my pot's level, attached, and centered and ready for me to trim. There are a lot of trim tools out on the market. This is the pear tool, and uh, this works really well for the side. It's not a good tool to use here in, on the bottom because uh, this part of your pot actually travels at a different speed than this, and so you'll get a little chattering or a little ski, uh, ski jump on it if you try to use this, but it is good for the side. This is uh, my favorite trim tool, and this is an 8R1 from Kemper Tools. Again, there's all different kinds of trim tools. I just like this one because of all the angles. You'll see that I take advantage of all these angles on the trim tool. I call this the apple tool because this is an apple and this looks like the stem, and then it kind of goes with the pear tool. So I'm going to put the pear tool up because I don't use that very often. And now what I'm going to do is the apple part of my tool. And we're going to trim the excess off the sides. That's the first thing I'm going to do. I hold my tool four fingers forward. That's so that if the tool does catch into the clay and pulls, I've got a good counterbalance on it and it won't just pull through my fingers. If I was holding it with a pencil and it pulled, it would pull through my fingers. So four fingers forward. I'm going to use the wide and the apple side. I'm going to tuck in my elbows and brace and I'm going to slowly start trimming away the sides of my pot. Now again, I'm not going to trim all the way down. All that's already done. I'm just going to trim the weight off right here. I call this um, like peeling an apple. If you look at it, if you hold the tool just right, let's think about if you're peeling an apple, how you'd hold a knife or hold a tool. You get it at just the right angle and then the clay just feeds through the tool. I don't have to push. I don't have to dig. I'm just going to slowly, layer at a time, trim that extra off. This is called an 8R1 because it's 8 inches long and it's a ribbon tool. The R stands for ribbon because see how the clay comes off in ribbons? That's how you know that your clay was uh, just the right uh, leather hard for trimming. If it comes out of the tool and comes over and sticks back onto your pot, your pot is too wet. You need to let it dry a little bit more. And if you're trimming like this and it comes off in a big sand like it's like a rooster tail, then that means that you waited a little long. You can trim dry pots, but you do run a risk of them breaking at the rim because of all the pressure and the weight on the rim when it's on your pot. So I'm going to trim this a little bit more. If I wanted to, I could have saved that hot dog where I measured on the inside and set it out here. But I'm going to look at the profile of my pot. I'm going to make sure that it's got a nice profile. Because when you first pull this off the wheel, this is kind of usually a little thick. But what I'm doing now is I'm creating the side of my pot all the way from the rim all the way down to the foot. So I want to make sure that my profile is nice and smooth. After I trim the side, it's time to make the inner foot line. When I trim the side, I actually created the outer line of my foot. The inner foot line is going to be here, and this is going to be my foot well. So I like this tool because it's got this little pointy part, and with the pointed end, I'm going to make my inner foot line. I'm going to hold my tool, brace really well, and I'm going to make my inner foot line the depth that I know I can go with and leave the floor of the pot the right thickness. So remember my pot was about this, the floor was about this thick. I'm going to take the tool, I'm going to make the inner foot line as deep as I need to go, still leaving the thickness of the foot that I need. As soon as I make this inner foot line that depth, I'm going to quit because um, part of trimming a pot, the risk is that you trim through the bottom. But we're not going to trim through the bottom because we've already have our measurement of how thick the bottom is. I've made my inner foot line the depth I know I can go, leaving 
the, the thickness that I need for the floor. And then I can turn over to my apple side of my tool and I'm going to take this middle out, this foot well out, one layer at a time. I'm not going to push real hard. I'm going to just get that tool at the right angle to where it peels that layer off just like peeling an apple. One layer at a time. Another reason why I like this tool is because it's got this little bend right here and so I can get all the way up to my foot and not worry about it trimming off my foot with a, uh, with a round end or by accident. So it just goes right there to that foot and stops. After you trim that level out, I don't need to trim any more. If I get this level with my inner foot line, I, if I keep trimming, I've lost my measurement and it might trim through. Something I do want to check though is to take a straight edge, go across the foot and make sure that this is nice and level. Sometimes on trimming, especially beginners, they'll get it deep here, but then this is really um, high or low if it spots upside down. But if you look here, you can see I've got it nice and level here. If I wasn't, I could take this away and I could trim a little bit more. If this foot well, if you can stack two pennies in this foot well right here, then you'll be able to glaze the inside. If you're unable to stack two pennies in there, you may have to consider wax resist or keeping the glaze from this part because the glaze might be so thick that it might sit, uh, stick to the kiln shelf. So I've kind of reached the where I need to go. I mean, this is functional. I've got the extra off the edge. I've got my foot. I've trimmed out the foot well. But let's take this a step further. We can make this a defined foot. Again, I can use this pointed end, and I'm going to make a little line right here. And then where that line is, I'm going to take my tool and I'm going to pull this up to make the foot. And then I'm going to round this off for the side. The advantage of having a defined foot is when you glaze, you can't have glaze on the bottom of the piece. And most studios will use a wax resist on the foot so that the glaze won't uh, soak in on the foot. So if you have a defined foot, the nice thing is the glaze can come here, the wax can go there, and you have a really clean line for them to meet. So you don't have to worry about making a perfect line with the wax because your pot tells you where that line is. You can also do a decorative foot. So let's, let me make a line a little bit lower like this. And then I'm going to take the rounded end. I'm going to scoop this out. And I make a little scallop there. So let's say that my foot was really uh, thick. I could trim a really tall foot and then I could scallop it through and it would look like a little Chinese lantern. Or let's say that my floor of my pot was really thin but I still needed a foot. I could do some hand building and I could make three little balls of clay and uh, get those attached to the bottom of the foot and that would be a decorative foot. This is kind of a fun foot because it's just a nice scallop. At uh, the Clay Ladies Campus we have a lot of glazes that are flowy glazes and one nice thing about this foot is the glazes have room to flow and they'll catch right there so we don't have to worry about them running all the way off to the end of the pot. So we could go functional, we could do defined, we can do decorative, but one thing we need to do is make the bottom of our pot nice. If you look at this, you can see these lines where I trimmed. You can see it's kind of rough here, rough there. And then I have these beautiful throwing rings to about right here. So what I want to do is make this whole bottom of my pot as pretty as the top. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the wooden tool and a sponge. We're going to squeeze out all the water. And not with the pointed end, but the flat end, I'm going to hold my sponge on the pot. And with this flat end, I'm going to push that water to the clay. What this does is it mixes the water in the clay and it brings up a slip. And that'll bring my throwing rings back. It also makes for a really nice, smooth surface. Look at that. And I can also do it here on my foot. I can do it on the bottom of my foot. I can do it in the middle. And something you can do that will really make your foot nice is you can polish it with your finger. We have to remember that the bottom of the pot is as important as the rim, the shape, the inside. That's part of your craftsmanship. So take a moment and really make the bottom of your pot as nice as the top of your pot. This is also the time that you get to write your name. Um, I usually use the pointed end of my trim tool. You can use a ballpoint pen. Yeah, this is when you get to decide what you want your signature to look like. You can date it if you'd like. I always make my beginner students do write number one on their very first pot. When you're trimming, 
you have to also keep in mind that this is a good time to do a lot of decorating. You can add handles at leather hard. This is when you would carve, when you would add on. You can also pierce through if you'd like. There's a slip decorating. Clay Lady has a whole line of what I call clay paints that are just prepared slips where you could paint on, you can carve through, you can do uh, transfer. So much can happen at the leather hard stage. We also need to remember that the pot is more fragile at, at this time and bone dry than any other time. So you don't want to carry your pot by the rim. Always carry it two hands underneath. Also know that the clay, if you rub at it, if like I have a little scratch there, if you rub at it, you'll actually rub the clay away and it'll leave a really rough spot here. So if you had a ding in your pot, the best thing to do is just get a little bit of clay, fill that in, and with a wet finger, rub at that and that way you can fill it in but you'll still have that clay platelet on the outside to make it really nice and smooth. I love this stage of the clay and you know I, I think that most potters they like that where it still looks like clay and then when we glaze it we really chase this kind of look for so that it has that wet clay look because once it goes into the bisque fire it's not clay anymore it becomes a ceramic piece. I hope you enjoyed learning how to trim, making your inside pot and your outside pot match. This is a good time to explore a lot of different decorating, but once it gets to bone dry, you could debisque fire it, then you can glaze it, and then you'll have a beautiful piece. You'll go from a piece of clay to a piece that will last forever. If you want to know more information about my campus or maybe the clay paints interested you or my new book about uh, the, the Clay Ladies Lesson Book, it's a lessons for the studio and the spirit of the potter, or maybe you just want to sign up for our newsletter so you can stay in touch with us, you can go to theclaylady.com and also do check out all my other videos on my YouTube channel at Danielle the Clay Lady. So thank you so much for the teaching opportunity and I hope you remember to be an artist in everything you do.